Hello, and welcome to What's the Big Idea? I'm your host, Michelle Tuck Ponder. Today's episode is brought to you by Destination Imagination, commonly referred to as DI, the leading creative problem-solving experience for children. Through DI's innovative, project-based educational experiences, participants gain the skills that will set them up for success in careers like the one we're going to hear about today. Learn more about DI at destinationimagination.org. On today's episode, we are pleased to welcome India Sylvester. India is the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer at Lumen Technologies. India has a rich history as a leader in human resources and talent management. After earning her MBA from Strayer University and her Senior Professional in Human Resources certification, India brought her expertise to companies in electronics, manufacturing, and other industries before arriving at Lumen. Joining us today from Altamonte Springs, Florida, please welcome India Sylvester. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here today. Oh, well, we're super excited to have you here um, talking to us about your career. Um, and I'm just going to jump right in and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and your job. For sure. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I do reside uh, in Florida, sunny Florida. Um, and then I am a mom uh, of two as well as a wife. Uh, and in my spare time, so when I'm not doing all things diversity, inclusion and belonging, um, one of my favorite hobbies is actually to spend time being creative in my home mm -hmm. uh, and thinking of ways to renovate and redecorate it. Um, so that's how I like to spend my uh, my fun time. Well, we have to have an offline conversation <laughs> because I'm a little HGTV addicted myself. Yes. And um, that's my hobby, too. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so you're in human resources, which, you know, as a as a ex chief executive officer, you realize very quickly that is one of the most important areas of conducting your business, how you. I don't want to say manage your staff or manage your people, but how you work together to have a an, a, an effective organization. So I'm interested in finding out whether or not there was a particular moment or experience that inspired you to take the journey that has led to your current career. There are a couple of things, um, honestly, Michelle, that I would call out. Uh, the first thing that I would call out, so I'm going to go a little bit backwards because this first thing that I'm going to call out is actually uh, a little bit later in life uh, than the, the other uh, uh, moment that I'd like to share with you. So in college, uh, so this would have been undergrad. Uh, as I was nearing the end of my degree program, I actually majored in economics uh, in college. And so as I was nearing the end of my degree program, I needed to select an elective to take. Human resource management was an elective uh, that was offered at my university, but not a, a major that you could have. Mm -hmm. And I could not shake how intrigued I was about all things human resources, from the laws to really also thinking about how do you um, ensure that you have the right people in the right roles at the right time in order to deliver amazing results to a business. Uh, and so I did finish my degree program, couldn't stop thinking about human resources and a couple of years out of college, got my first role in human resources. Um, and so that's been sort of my career uh, overall has been really focused on human resource management. But that other moment that I think is really important to call out is more related to the role that I am in today as the chief diversity and inclusion officer. As a child, uh, I was part of a school integration program uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And I was bused from one side of town to the other side of town to attend school with people from really very diverse backgrounds. There were several countries represented, uh, different socioeconomic status, um, really people who didn't all look like me, think like me, talk like me. And it was amazing. 
Um, I had an opportunity to work with and learn from people who were different from me. And that then translated into friendships. And then also the way that I am today uh, in terms of how I interact with with people and what my own network looks like. But in this role, it's so important because I learned the value at an early age of diverse perspectives. And now here I am leading a function uh, at a company such as Lumen, where that's what I'm talking about. Diverse perspectives are so needed and valuable. You know, that is, that is so true. It, interestingly enough, I was one of the first children in the United States bused for integration. I grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey, and our superintendent decided that the Black folks lived on one side of town and the white folks lived on another side of town, and the kids were not having a full experience by being able to engage with one another. And so he introduced busing and it was really quiet. It was like, okay, well, you're getting on a bus and you're going across town and you're absolutely right. It's life changing. Yes. It's, it's life changing. And for so many of our kids who don't have that opportunity, it happens in the workplace. So how does, how do you integrate that into the workplace for folks who have never had a chance to interact or engage with people who are different from themselves? Thank you for asking that. That's a great question. You know, one of the things that we have done uh, at Lumen, and I would say other companies have likely done something similar, is really start to build out a foundation of educating people around the unconscious biases that we all have as humans. Um, you just have them. It's just kind of how we sort of go about our days. We all have these these um, filters, if you will. Um, there's so much that kind of comes at us at one time uh, it, at any moment of a day. And it's how do we start to kind of compartmentalize what's coming in um, and then take action? But a part of that then are, are biases that we have. And so one of the things that we're doing is really working on that foundation that says we all have biases. How do we make sure that we manage them and they don't manage us? Uh, right. And so it's a matter of getting people to even understand that from the start. And it's it's working well, but then also taking it a step further and offering opportunities um, or suggestions or recommendations, if you will, for people to start engaging with others that, again, don't look like, sound like, talk like them in order to gain greater perspective, um, maybe to help solve a business problem, whatever that might be. Um, but really opening up opportunities to hear hear other ideas, hear creative ideas, things that, you know, as an individual, we might not think of by ourselves, but with others, that wisdom is there and we're able to tap into those things and really be able to not just solve uh, problems for the business, but really enhance, I think, the overall employee experience. Mm -hmm. So we talk a lot about the four C's and I think that that's what you're talking about. Communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity is sort of the, the basis of what we teach in SEI. How do you use that in your work? If we could drill down just a little bit more. For sure. All four of those C's, you're right, are things that I use in my work. Um, the first one, collaboration that I'll, I'll call out is really in this work, it's important for everyone to understand that it's going to take everyone. Uh, for us to really foster a culture of inclusion and belonging, um, it's not that it just rests solely on the shoulders of the chief diversity and inclusion officer. Um, it's really a part of uh, what's expected, I would say, of, of you know, individual contributors or, or their leaders? How do we make sure that we are impacting in a positive way the moments that matter for each individual employee? And so for my work, I collaborate with whether it's leaders of various uh, human resources centers of excellence or other leaders in the organization, or maybe even board members for some of our employee resource groups to help us really think through what's important, what are the gaps, what are the opportunities, and what are some really great ideas to help us with getting there? Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I think about that and thinking about creativity, that's where those ideas come in. I think I mentioned it a moment ago, but really when you start to bring in all of these different uh, perspectives, that's where that creativity comes through. And while, you know, anyone can research online and see what might be best practices related to diversity, inclusion and belonging, what I would tell you is that all of these best practices exist and yet 
we still have a ways to go. Uh, when you just think about the corporate world, there is a ways, there's a way to go right on that. And so really engaging that creativity through collaboration helps us to think differently and say, how can we move this needle in a way that maybe we haven't previously? Um, I think you also talked about communication. Certainly. Huge. Huge. Uh, and, and a lot of times when people think about communication, a lot of times they're thinking about uh, maybe the talking that I might do. That's a piece of it. But I'll tell you in this work, it's really important to listen. Uh, and so listening to understand uh, is really important in this work and then helps, again, start to inform. Well, then where are those opportunities? If I'm listening to what people's experiences are, it helps me to recognize then what some of those different uh, opportunities are that I might want to tap into and put initiatives in place to help us move that needle. And I I'm forget which was the last one that I didn't cover. You did not cover critical thinking. Oh, huge <laughs> critical thinking. OK, so so this one, the way I think about critical thinking is I think about how do I challenge my own thinking? I mentioned about bias, talked about the fact that we all have biases. And as a chief diversity and inclusion officer, I'm still a human. So I still have biases that I have to think through and, and make sure that they're not managing me. Right. And so critical thinking helps me to think differently, to challenge my own thinking. It gives me an opportunity, even in those collaboration sessions, to say, what next? What haven't I thought of? What could go wrong? What might the impact be? And how do we ensure that we're going to have that positive impact that we're seeking? But now, we talked about the four C's, and I'm going to ask you to go way back, from not, not that far back, but sort of far back. And, and I'd love for, because a lot of our listeners are students, and, and they're interested, well, what kind of activities were you involved in that you think helped prepare you for your career, or that you reach back and say, hmm, I had that experience, and I am informed by that experience in terms of what I do today? Love that. And thank you so much for saying that it's not that far back. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> what I what I would say is as a child, I was an avid reader. Mm -hmm. I read all the time. There would be times where I mean, and we're, we're going back for sure, where kids in the neighborhood might come to the door and say, hey, can you come out and play? And I would say after I finish this book. Um, so it was it was just that important to me. And now in the work that I do, it's equally important to continue to read, um, to stay up on what's happening in that in that space or in the diversity, inclusion, belonging world. Continuing to read is huge. The other thing that I would call out is taking opportunities to participate in group projects was big as well. So and especially those group projects where the teacher assigned the team members. There's a tendency to gravitate to who you usually work with or who you usually want to uh, play with, and, and, you know, as a kid. But when a teacher assigned a group assignment and then said, these are the members, really gave me an opportunity to see, wow, I hadn't thought about that. Whatever, you know, whatever that idea was and to learn from them. Um, and then to use that now today, again, by saying, you know what, let's include others in these group projects, if you will, collaboration and learning from others. Wow, that that's great. I, I can't wait to hear more about about your background and how it and how it led to where you are today. But right now we need to take a short break. So we will be right back with India Sylvester. Destination Imagination is busy behind the scenes planning an exciting new season of creativity, collaboration, STEAM learning, and a lot of fun for your kids. Your favorite young people can choose from one of seven brand new in-person challenges now when you start a team. If you're ready to awaken creativity and ignite a love of learning for your child, join us today. To get started, visit us at destinationimagination.org forward slash the big idea. The Imagine Experience is a brand new program from Destination Imagination, presented by Lumen Technologies. 
This program aims to bring transformative STEM learning to students living in underserved communities all over the world. To learn more about the Imagine Experience, please visit www.imagineexperience.org. Welcome back to What's the Big Idea with our guest, India Sylvester from Lumen Technologies. Uh, so, India, you know, one of the things that I'm really interested in is how things in the outside world impact what your work is inside Lumen Technologies. You know, everything we know what's going on. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it absolutely impacts all of the, the the things that are happening, whether we're talking about, you know, being in a pandemic or um, really, you know, when we start to think about a lot of the um, the outcry, if you will, for social justice that we saw in 2020. I mean, all of those things definitely impact uh, certainly what we have seen this year um, as it relates to the experience that Asian Americans are having. Right. All of those things definitely impact the work that I do. Um, and so it's one really making sure that we're caring uh, for employees, giving space for people to talk and express what it is that they're feeling uh, and what they are experiencing and recognizing that. People come to work, but they're still people first. And let's make sure then that we we uh, care for them in that way and understand that outside of these doors or outside of these computers in the virtual <laughs> environment, um, that people are still dealing with life. And how do we how do we make sure that this is a safe space to talk about those things? But then also think about actions that we can take to, again, help improve their experience. So it's, it's I'm absolutely impacted by it um, as different things occur. It's it's something that I've got to think about and, and address as appropriate each time. So, right, because you're right, we don't we don't stop hearing and thinking and feeling just because we walked into work or walked right. into church or even walked into school. I think one of the things that's really important for adults to understand is that kids have really big ears. Like they are listening. They can tell you more about what's going on and 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 see a lot of things. And and I think that the whole listening point that that, that you talked about earlier is hearing because a lot of people never get to speak about diversity, equity, and inclusion. That That is not part of their normal day. And so a lot of people are really uncomfortable with having that conversation. How do you, how do you draw that out? How do you um, create an environment where people can have a certain level of comfort in asking questions and also listening to other folks? Mm, that's a great question. I think it's about really... Um, Offering up grace, if you will, uh, to to really one, if you if you are looking to embark on a conversation, for example, and it's it's really making it clear to the individual or individuals, if you will, mm -hmm. on the other side of that conversation, that it is a safe space, that this is an opportunity um, to learn and and to speak and to be heard um, and to realize that there's no expectation that you must get it all right. That's where that grace comes in. Um, but really being genuine and recognizing that I don't know everything, you know, whomever's having that conversation may not know everything, but that they're open and willing to learn. I think doing that at the start of a conversation that could be a really tough conversation um, kind of sets the stage and the tone uh, for how that should go. I, grace is huge. I cannot stress that enough. Mm -hmm. Explain what you mean by grace. Mm. Um, I would start off by assuming positive intent. Um, <laughs> it's when someone is looking to learn um, or expressing what they might feel personally. Um, it, it's it's important to recognize that that's a vulnerable position to be in. Um, and so as a listener for someone who's talking um, to then allow that grace for a person to maybe stumble a little bit over their words, it, it, you know, but realizing that where they are coming from is a place of positivity and wanting to get better. 
that's where that that grace comes in. None of us, uh, no person is perfect, right? We all will sometimes say the wrong thing or or make a mistake, and it's 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 really recognizing that we aren't perfect, but we want to get better. And if you're having those conversations where someone has said, "I want to have this conversation." you're already part of the way there now just mm-hmm. be adding that grace, which means to really assume that positive intent and allow space for errors. Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, correct. But do it in a, in a positive way mm-hmm. and then move forward. I, I kind of look at it as you wouldn't yell at a baby who was taking their first steps because they could not sprint across the floor. Right. You would recognize that you you take a couple of steps and you fall and you take a couple of more steps and then you fall or you may decide you don't want to walk at all for a while because it hurts too much when you fall. And yes. I kind of, if I, if I can come into a room with that, that mindset and understand that people are going to say things. And if I just take a, have a visceral response, it's going to be, that's upsetting. That's offensive. But if you say, you know what, they, they probably don't even know it. So how do we, how do we communicate? And I love that word, Grace. I think I think that's wonderful. Obviously, you you're you're crushing it because Lumen Technologies has been recognized for <laughs> inclusive work environment by Forbes magazine, the Human Rights Campaign Foundation. Which of the initiatives for diversity, inclusion, and belonging are you most proud of? You know what? What I would say is this. I don't know that I would call it out as one specific initiative. Instead, Michelle, what I what I might say is really the amplified focus on diversity, inclusion, and belonging that is happening at Lumen is what I'm most proud of. Um, It's not that we haven't been focused previously on it, but I would say um, last year that that we, we turned it up, I would say, definitely turned it up quite a bit. Um, So I wouldn't say one particular initiative. There are things that I'm super proud of. I mean, we've got lots of great things happening, mentoring programs for, you know, for for groups that maybe have been underrepresented or um, opportunities for employee resource groups and getting involved there, opportunities for uh, feedback sessions such as listening circles. All of those things are super amazing. But I think they're all a part of that overall um, amplifying or amplification, if you will, of the focus on this really important topic. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So this February, you had a chance to write a really excellent article about recognizing the achievements of, of Black innovators. And I consider myself a Black history expert. My, in fact, I just won with my son the Middle School Black History Championship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you won it with your I son. Gonna, I heard you say yeah. that. <laughs> well, you know what? the Beyonce songs and my son son kept saying mom you don't know and I'm like (laughs) (laughs) I love it but um you noticed our history going forward are there any black innovators that you're keeping your eye on and saying this is the next big thing this person has their finger on are you seeing anybody coming coming up who, who you think are are going to we're going to be talking about or our kids are going to be talking about in black history as innovators? What I would say is they likely work at Lumen. <laughs> and, and the reason I say that is, is this this work that I'm doing is about making sure that there are opportunities um, for, for people to have amazing experiences at work, um, to see great career success. And to do that, it requires those diverse perspectives, right? And that's where we'll get those amazing ideas. And so in terms of individuals who are um, being innovative, whether it's in the work that they're doing uh, today or what they aspire to be, they're out there. But we've got to make sure that we're making the space for it to be for them to be heard, those voices to be heard. So, yeah, I would say they're likely at Lumen. They, they're at other companies as well. I'm clearly partial, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm sure they are at other companies as well. They're out there. We may not know who they are yet, but we will because those voices will be heard. Yes. And I think they're in DI, too. So I'm 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 <laughs> keeping my fingers crossed that we're creating an environment that that they can thrive in as well. <laughs> So now we're going to go to our really fun section of our show. You may not think it's fun, but um, oh. <laughs> it is 
absolutely fun and it's called rapid fire and i'm going to ask you three questions and your answer is the first thing that comes to your mind (laughs) yes or no will robots ultimately come for your job no why is that Mm. Um, Because I think that robots, first of all, have to be programmed, if you will, by people and people continue to change and evolve. It's going to be important, I think, for that human element to always be there. And I don't think that a robot is going to get there. I think a robot um, in that case might help with different things or really great places where you would use a robot. Absolutely. Do I think they'll replace all jobs? No, but you still got to have the people behind the scenes to program them. For my work, it's so human. It's human focused. I mean, it truly is. And I, and I think it's going to be necessary to always have a person uh, focused on these things. Okay. Rapid fire question number two, is social media the best or the worst? I think social media um, is the best. And (laughs) and it depends on what it's used for is what makes it the best. The reason I say it is the best is because it does give an opportunity to hear more broadly what people are thinking. For the kind of work that I do, I need to know what people are thinking and even outside of our doors and what people might say, for example, on social media that they might not be comfortable saying in a work environment. But it's still valid information that I I need to be able to look at, analyze and think through. Um, So I would say it's it's the best for that. You said I could only pick one, I think. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There are are there are there opportunities? Are there some drawbacks? Yes. Yes. I I do think there are some drawbacks as it relates to social media. I think it can um, if used in inappropriately can really cause a bad experience for others. But there is some goodness, I think, that you can get from it. And and what I described was one example of it. Sure. All right. Final question. Yes or no. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes. And and here's why. Because I haven't tried it yet and I need to. Um, so so, yes, it does, because somebody somewhere, somebody's right, because you can find it in a number of places. So somewhere that was an idea. And it is successful because you'll find at a number of different places that pineapple is available on pizza. Somebody had a creative idea to put something there that we might not have thought of before. So, yeah, it does belong. There's one of those creative ideas and they all belong. OK, I'm a Jersey girl, so <laughs> I, will, I will not. Comment on that. Pizza is a religion in New Jersey. So but we'll just let that fence it. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you'd like for us to know before we wrap up? I would love to kind of leave um, the audience with just some some words to to consider. Um, No ideas that are not important are not um, cool enough to bring up. And so I would encourage people to, even if it seems like it's off the wall, if it seems like, oh, you know, this is this, people are going to think that this is, um, you know, really an odd idea or what have you share those ideas, be willing to share them, be willing to be uh, creative because out of those things, out of those kinds of ideas, I would say is where we get true innovation. It's when people start to think outside of that box that we get those really cool and amazing things we haven't thought of. So when you have an opportunity to be creative, do it and share that with others. You never know. You may be one of these innovators that we haven't discovered yet. And that's the big idea. So thank you so much, India Sylvester, Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer at Lumen Technologies. I thank you so much for being our guest. It's been a lot of fun talking to you today. Same, I'm all smiles. Love, love, love participating in this today. Thank you. We would like to acknowledge that this episode of What's the Big Idea? was recorded on land originally inhabited and cultivated by the Lenape, Shawnee, 
Muscogee, and Choctaw nations. We are grateful for this land and for the people who have stewarded it for generations. This episode was produced by Kelsey Selleck with additional material provided by Donald Ferro and Chris Beisel and music by Kevin McLeod. Special thanks again to our guest, India Sylvester, for joining us today. You can learn more about India on LinkedIn, and you can learn more about how Lumen Technologies is helping DI create more opportunities for students by visiting destinationimagination.org slash the big idea. I'm Michelle Tuck Ponder. Thanks for joining us today. And I hope that you will join us again and you will have a big idea sometime this week. So long, everybody. The U.S. Department of Labor estimates that 65% of today's students will be employed in jobs that have yet to be invented. We have no way of knowing what those jobs will entail. But we do know that the skills that will prepare them for success are the skills that they can develop through destination imagination. Hi, I'm Chris Beisel, Director of Training for Destination Imagination. I was a team manager for 15 years and 22 teams before I joined the staff. Being a team manager was the best thing that I did for all my children. Destination Imagination, or DI, is an international project-based competition that reinforces the four C's, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. You probably heard about those skills in today's episode, and DI is the place where kids like yours develop those skills for themselves. Students work together in small teams to create solutions to a challenge. DI's team challenges fall into one of seven categories, scientific, technical, engineering, fine arts, improvisation, service learning, and for our younger children, early learning. A DI team selects one of those seven challenges and prepares a solution to present at a local tournament. Throughout the experience, students create projects, solve problems, build relationships, learn new concepts, and have a great time in the process. We're building the workforce of the future. Today's DI participants are tomorrow's innovators, problem solvers, and leaders. If that sounds like a good fit for you and the young people in your life, we would love to have you join us. To get started today, visit destinationimagination.org slash learn more.